Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us on this session. My name is Marianne and I am responsible for sustainability at Booking Holdings. And today we're going to talk about the future of travel and the future of sustainable travel uh, in that particular case. And as you might have heard during earlier sessions, we are very much committed to make sustainable travel easier for everyone. Why? Because it's our company mission to make it easier for everyone to experience the world. But we very much understand that we have a shared responsibility to make sure there's a world worth experiencing as well. And while travel is currently at pause, the desire to travel has not been extinguished. And one day, hopefully soon, we will see travel and tourism return. But we have to ask ourselves, what kind of travel industry do we want to return to? And while this remains a challenging time for an, our industry, there's also an opportunity. We can rebuild a more sustainable travel industry together. And this cannot be achieved by individual actors, but it must be a collective movement. At Booking.com, we've identified the first steps in this movement, making it easier for partners to share their sustainability information with customers. And hundreds of thousands of you have already shared this information with us. And at the end of the panel, we'll show you how you can do that too. Today, I'm joined with three amazing guests um, that represent a key part of the story. We have uh, Nico joining us today, and Nico is General Manager of Hotel Jakarta in Amsterdam. Welcome, Nico. Thank you for being here. We have Bea here today, and Bea is Head of Sustainability of the Core Business at Booking.com. And we have Eline here today, and Eline is a Research and Analyst Specialist at Booking.com, and very much deep into what consumers want around sustainable travel. Did I say that correctly? Yep, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. I want to start with you, Alina, because that's the one thing we all want to know. How do consumers feel about uh, sustainable travel? What was their attitudes in general, but also what have we seen in the past year? Uh, did that change? Yeah, um, well, we know uh, from, from research that we run every single year, actually, around sustainable travel particularly, that um, people do consider uh, sustainable travel to be a very important topic and people do have ver very favorable attitudes towards it. They believe that, you know, travelers should act now and sort of save the planet for future generations. These are all things that are already, uh, yeah, existent. But what we've seen in the last year is that there's definitely been a, a change as well in uh, sort of the more, um, yeah, people have become a little bit more serious about the, uh, sustainability because Obviously, it's been a very strange year and there's been a lot more importance given to sustainability. There's been a lot more news coverage, for instance, around uh, sort of the, the positive impact that national lockdowns and travel bans have had on the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has just brought sustainability top of mind to people. Um, and then later on, we start talking more about uh, supporting local businesses. Again, this is uh, related to sustainability. And um, what we actually found out through research that we ran back in July is that for 53% of travelers, uh, this actually has caused them to want to travel more sustainably, specifically because the pandemic has really opened their eyes to actually uh, becoming more sustainable. Yeah. That is really good to hear. And I think very uh, chosen opportunity, definitely for us. But in all honesty, we haven't seen a massive amount of consumer demand for uh, sustainable properties. What is causing that? Yeah, there is, uh, you're right. I mean, there is a, a huge divide or a huge gap still between sort of that positive attitude people have towards sustainable travel and the actual behaviors that they're engaging in. Um, and through our research, we know uh, a few of the most important barriers that are it's sort of withholding people from being as sustainable as they ideally would like to be. Uh, so first of all, the most important barrier that we found, uh, and this is uh, across the world basically, um, is that people feel there's not enough uh, sustainable options available to them. Mm -hmm. And then very closely related to this and also a very important barrier is that people feel they don't know how or where to find these sustainable options. Um, now, I say they're very closely related because uh, the only difference really, if you look at it closely, is uh, about where you sort of place the responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you place the responsibility with yourself, then you're going to say, I don't know how to find it. But if you place a responsibility externally, then it's more about it's there's not, not there. enough available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the likelihood of all of these people who say there's nothing available having actually actively researched uh, sustainable options is very small. So, 
uh, yeah, they're very closely related. And of course, uh, it's going to take the entire travel industry to work together to both um, make sustainable options more findable and more available. It's not something that one player can do on their own. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there are other barriers too, unfortunately. Um, so we can't just expect that if we make it more uh, easy to find and uh, more readily available to people, that this is going to completely change everything. Um, for instance, knowledge is still uh, a pretty big issue. Um, right now, we see there are definitely varying levels of uh, knowledge around sustainability in general. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly uh, what we see is that consumers actually tend to relate it to the environment more than any other uh, practices. So, for example, the socioeconomic factors taken into sustainability, they don't recognize Exactly, that. yeah. That's not, that's not something that's top of mind for them. And mm -hmm. it makes sense also. I mean, it's not talked about a lot in, uh, in the news, for instance. It's also, I mean, especially in Europe, for instance, even in schools, there, kids are taught about sustainability, but it's about recycling and it's about airplanes uh, yeah. causing lots of CO2 emissions. So these things are the things people know about. But um, yeah, there, we should really sort of focus our attention also to educate consumers about all the other aspects uh, of sustainable travel. Mm -hmm. Um, and last but not least, there is uh, still some issues uh, related to price perception. Unfortunately, uh, what we see in other uh, sectors or uh, yeah, businesses, we see that um, the sustainable alternative is usually more expensive than yeah. the regular uh, product. And people take this also to travel. They think that just because uh, something is sustainable, it's going to be more expensive as well. And that, of course, doesn't have to be true when we know this. Um, but as long as there is this divide between a sustainable option and a non-sustainable option, people will have this feeling of a sustainable option being more expensive. So I would say the way to overcome this barrier is to actually sort of normalize uh, sustainable options to make sure that there are actually plenty of sustainable options so people don't view it as an alternative, but yeah. rather the norm. Then we should also expect them to yeah. Stop thinking that it's going to be more expensive. That's that's a clear statement. That needs that sustainable travel needs to be the mainstream. Uh, Bea, understanding that it, this all starts with partners actually implementing these sustainable practices. What do you see looking at it from a partner perspective? So from a partner perspective, uh, I would say it depends on which partners you look at. If you look at partners that already have sustainable practices uh, in place, or are more advanced into their sustainability journey. The main barrier, if you look at a platform like ours, is the lack of uh, yeah, the platform to actually uh, communicate those practices. So until recently, we have not uh, offered the opportunity to accommodations to actually talk about it. So that would be the first barrier for them. How can I tell my story to customers about what I'm doing? Uh, the second thing uh, that we see happening also with uh, partners that have accommodations that have sustainable practices in place is that they suffer from what is called greenhousing, which is a fear, like a, a, a refraining themselves from communicating about what sustainable practices they have in place because they lack conf confidence on how to craft the message or they feel that people will think that they are being uh, patronizing and basically they prefer to say nothing mm -hmm. instead. If you look on the other hand at partners that have little or no sustainable par pr practices in place, uh, everything starts by understanding the why. So why should I invest on this topic? Uh, what is in for me? Uh, yeah, our customer, I'm going to get more customers. Am I going to reduce costs? Do I care about making a positive impact, which mm -hmm. is also possible? The second barrier for these type of partners is about um, a lack of understanding of where the impact lies. So what type of uh, practices should I prioritize? Where do I start? And last but not least, if they've already made the decision that they want to implement some of these practices, they feel that they are not equipped with the right knowledge or tools to actually take those steps. Well, Nico, I think you are one of the people that actually overcame all of these barriers because your hotel is one of the front runners on sustainability in Amsterdam. It is. So you've been through all of this. Yeah. Um, 
what have been what has been your challenge on on, on to implement this, no, and what have, uh, what's been your success most of all? May, 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 uh, I can first explain how, how we became so sustainable. Yeah, uh, 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 we were competing in a contest to 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 build a, a hotel on this beautiful spot in in the River I in Amsterdam, and one of the requirements from the municipality was that it sh one of the things was it should be very sustainable. Uh, so uh, we said, well, let's win this competition and let's be as sustainable as possible. So we took it from scratch uh, and we made it one of our main topics. Uh, and we uh, looked at it as a, as a differentiator. How can we differentiate ourselves and how can we uh, be more attractive to, to hotel guests and they prefer to book with us instead of uh, booking another less sustainable property? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we said, well, let's be as sustainable as possible, and let's it, let it be let let it go hand in hand with guest comfort. Uh, so we saw it as an added value. So we implemented uh, an awful lot. We implemented solar panels. Uh, we were reducing uh, electricity costs by doing that. We have a, a thermal heating uh, storage uh, below the ground, 110 meters and 160 meters to 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 heat up and to cool our building. Uh, we uh, have uh, uh, collect rainwater to water our beautiful inner garden. We have uh, floor heating and floor cooling. So we implemented a lot and we see actually that guests uh, experience our property uh, not only as a very environmental friendly uh, uh, environment, but also as a beautiful property where you have fun and where you can, where you can relax and where you experience really uh, good guest comfort. And that's, that's very nice to experience that. So we, we are we're very successful and we see that we are different than other ones and uh, we listen to our guests and they say the same. Yeah. So you're actually the opposite of what Eileen here describes as the guest feels that they that would get less if they choose the sustainable option in your hotel they actually get more. They get more, yeah. It's 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 adding value to the guest comfort and and, and as soon as you 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 achieve that then then it's an added value for not only for the guest but also for uh, for the hotelier and the owner. And um, for uh, the industry as a whole, what do you think uh, an OTA or the wider industry can do to make it easier for properties to make those sustainable choices? You obviously had the Gemeente Amsterdam pushing you a little bit on that. Yeah. What would be the nudge coming from the industry for other properties? No, it, it has to be in, in your DNA as well. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a travel industry, we have to tell ourselves that we, uh, we, we, we want to pass this planet on to the to, to next generation. Uh, so it has to be part of your own DNA and I think it's very good that uh, a municipality uh, puts in, a, it, it, in as a requirement to when you, when you build a place and even when you uh, get a permit to renovate your place uh, and I think also booking.com plays a big role in having this, this uh, practice available per property on your website it, and, and, and maybe uh, use it as a filter that, that people can filter to see these properties uh, and, and maybe incentive these properties by lowering their commission uh, or in another way uh, to, to, to uh, support uh, hoteliers to be more uh, sustainable and also to, for guests to book a more sustainable hotel. Um, uh, yeah. So you're saying make it a requirement, provide incentives and definitely make it visible uh, to definitely, guests? Definitely, yes. Um, so that would be a start on what sort of as a shared industry we could be doing. Yeah. Bea, how does Booking see this? So I think as a marketplace where we are putting together supply and demand, so we are connecting guests with accommodations, we have a unique uh, opportunity to create what we call the sustainable travel flywheel. So we believe that if we offer the opportunity to accommodations to actually communicate their sustainable practices so that customers can find them, so we overcome that uh, barrier for customers, then uh, customers will be inspired to make more sustainable choices, which in the end will help them to capture additional uh, uh, demand. And uh, in return, that will encourage more and more accommodations to actually invest on sustainable practices. So communicating about sustainability on our website, actually creating that big amount of sustainable supply that Elena is so much looking for, and then hoping that the, that the demand uh, for that sustainable supply, we see a pickup in there and start to get that flywheel going. Yeah. 
Elena, if you hear this, then, you know, the implementing the uh, sustainable practices, we start to communicate about this. What do you, re what do you think, what's the response we could expect from consumers? Well, based on research, uh, we already know that the, the response to be expected is very positive. Um, we basically already know through our research that uh, three in four or almost three in four uh, people would actually be more likely to choose an accommodation if they knew that it was implementing uh, sustainable practices. And this is regardless of if they were looking for a sustainable property or not. It's just that added benefit. It really doesn't do any harm. So this, in combination with the fact that we already know that people's attitudes are very positive and that people do consider it important, um, leads us to believe that, yeah, it, it is very, um, it, that responses should be very positive. Uh, and besides this, we also know uh, that some uh, guests actually get very uh, frustrated or annoyed when a property sort of uh, withholds them or limits their uh, the, the sustainable practices that they as guests can actually perform. Mm -hmm. If someone in their daily lives is very um, rigorous in always uh, recycling, for instance, but there's no recycling bin available in the hotel, that can actually cause friction and um, yeah, it does cause annoyment. So in, in the end, um, I would expect mostly positive, positive responses, response yeah. from guests. So Nico, you, you had these responses from guests. You don't put it up in front uh, on your website as an advertising with it, but of course I can imagine that the guest sees a lot of it. What the are the responses that you get? They, 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 they love it. You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, we don't want to, I said, we don't want to bother him too much with, uh, with our, the, when they check in, we say we are so sustainable. Uh, we want, we want to exp that they experience it, uh, that they feel it and that they feel the difference. Uh, and, and um, we only explain uh, when they ask for it. Uh, we have all information available. They can collect it whenever they want uh, and whatever way they want, on website, paper. Uh, we have a very nice booklet, uh, an in-house booklet for guests with, where they can see what we all do. Uh, but we only give them or explain them when, as soon as they ask. And we, of course, we ask them if they want to know something about it but in a, in, not in a very frustrating way, you know, it's just, it's just part of our guest experience. And, and we actually see that they, that, that they actually see and feel and experience that it adds value. And, and that's our aim, because we are there to, uh, to, uh, to give get our hotel guests a specific experience and a very nice experience. Um, uh, I can be very honest here, the only complaint we had uh, recently or last summer it was when we had 40 degrees centigrade uh, in, I think, a week in August. We have some difficulties with our floor cooling to cool down the hotel room, especially when people open their window, because um, uh, people are always, when they enter a room, uh, the first thing they do is they open a window because they want fresh air. Uh, as soon as that hot air comes in, the reaction time of our floor cooling, it takes more time than a traditional uh, air conditioning to cool down the, their room again. Uh, so uh, there comes a complaint that it is um, uh, too warm to sleep in, but uh, as soon as we explain how it works, why we have this in place, they, uh, they embrace it and they say, well, that's, that's nice. Uh, if I uh, save the planet with this, then, then it's good to, to close this door and uh, to be uh, a, su a sustainable guest as well. Yeah, so if the total guest experience is right and you can explain why certain measures are being taken, yeah then the guests continue to stay positive in their experience, even yeah. though the sustainable option might be a little bit more difficult for them. So in, in this case, the only difficult thing is, 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 uh, is the, 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 the cooling of the floor. And we, when we should uh, 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 build this property again, we should implement also a, a sort of a little cooling system to, to, uh, to, uh, to cool the air which comes into uh, to the room as well. But, but other than that, we do it exactly the same. Perfect. Well, Bea, hearing all of this, I think um, um, Bookingshot.com has some good plans on actually helping pro uh, properties uh, making all their sustainability efforts visible to guests. Um, how, what, are, what are our plans uh, with this? How do we scale this? How do we make it visible to consumers? What, what can you expect from Booking? Yeah. 
So there are uh, different things that we are doing. On the one hand, we want to reward and acknowledge the efforts of those partners that have gone above and beyond already and that are further ahead on their sustainability journey, like uh, Nico, uh, for example. So we want to uh, give visibility to the certifications that they have, so uh, independent certifications uh, uh, we are collecting that from the uh, certification bodies directly, GSTC certifications, green tourism and uh, EU, EU eco label. Uh, so that information is currently uh, visible on the hotel page. But we also want to make sure that we are making this accessible to all accommodations because we believe every big journey starts with small steps. So. We want uh, uh, everyone to uh, start by putting uh, uh, even a small or bigger things in place and communicating about that. So we uh, have created a landing page on the extranet where accommodations can uh, update their sustainability information and we are displaying this information on the hotel page to guests. And in the future, we will be uh, looking in the near future on how can we make it easier for guests, not only once they are on the hotel page to see what the hotel is doing, but also to identify those properties earlier on when they are starting to search for uh, an accommodation. So that's one thing. And for those that don't know what, where to start, we've uh, created also a sustainability handbook in collaboration with uh, different experts on different uh, topics with uh, simple steps that can inspire partners and help them to start on their sustainable um, yeah, journey. Amazing. That's a, that sounds like we're uh, sort of solving a lot of the barriers that were discussed here, at least in the first steps and the first entrances. So it's very interesting to see where this will take us. Yeah. Elina, dr dream away. In 10 years time, we will uh, look for ahead in the travel industry. We hope that travel has returned at least to, uh, to a, a normal level. And um, what does that look like, a sustainable travel industry? Um, well, I just hope that uh, in 10 years time that we can make sustainable travel the norm. I just want to make sure, you know, being a consumer researcher, I want to make sure that we take away any kind of friction that consumers are currently facing. I want to make it easy for them. Uh, so in that sense, I want, yeah, I want the sustainable options to be the norm so that people don't have to go out and actively look for them, but actually select them without even having to think about it. Yeah. But that's quite a call out, Bea, then if that's the dream, then our partners definitely need to do uh, all the work. What do you dream to, to offer, to be able to offer to our partners in order to create that, that industry? So I think, uh, yeah, we definitely need to help partners. So I think one of the things that we can help partners with is actually proving that customers value this topic because it will be a way to uh, help them prioritize, uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, looking into different type of incentives and uh, making sure that we are uh, basically learning because we will get many things wrong uh, along the way. So uh, one of the things that we are uh, looking forward to do is, of course, learning what things don't work and share it with the industry so that we can learn uh, together and hopefully it's not only something that happens at booking but that happens beyond booking and others are also taking the same steps because then it will be much easier to actually uh, drive change if it's something that you see everywhere. Exactly, Be being that unifier that, that it's, it's simple and easy to understand not only for partners but also for consumers whatever they see on any type of website that they go to, they see this thing. Yeah, thing. Exactly. Exactly. And then, Nico, for you, I feel you—you you are already the front runner on this. Is there still stuff that you dream about? No, we want to be. The, we want to stay front runner. No, <laughs> I, I also hope. Uh, I deeply hope that that sustainable travel will, will be the norm in ten years. Uh, why? Because we have to pass on this planet to next generations. Uh, of course, you want to be front runner, uh, and. I do a lot of show rounds in my property, not only for hotel guests or people from the neighborhood who, want, who would like to see our beautiful property, but also for hoteliers from all over the world. Architects who come to us to see and experience what we did. 
Uh, and that shows that a lot of hot hoteliers, investors and architects are very interested in the way we have built this property. And that's very nice to see. And we invest a lot of time to, to do so. And that's great to experience. And I honestly think and, uh, that uh, that will be an, uh, the norm in, 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 in constructing hotels and how to run hotels. Because it's, it's cost saving, it adds value, uh, and at the end it may, you make more money with it. Uh, and it's, it's good for the environment. So plus, 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 you know, only um, wins to, 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 to have. Uh, we, as a, as a company, will uh, certainly will take this a step further. Um, there are mes other measurements we can take into place, like reuse shower water uh, or uh, do other things uh, even better than we do now. So we will uh, certainly look at the future by investing in this, in this um, the way of building and constructing hotels and run hotels uh, uh, um, in years. So, so uh, that's, that's my dream and I think we're going to make this dream come true. Amazing. I hope the same. And I love to, s to hear more also in the future about your learnings and especially the new innovations that you implement in your tell. It's also good to hear that you continue to, to have stuff to dream about. It's, sure. it's not a journey that has a proper endpoint. It no. is definitely a journey that keeps evolving because the innovations also keep popping up. Yeah. Also for you, Bea, you must also yeah. take those continuously into account, into uh, showing those sustainable practices. You have to up Keep yeah. those sustainable practices. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think what we have in place today will evolve also as time passes. So. I think that's a, that's a good summary of the session in general. There's lots of opportunities, but it is a journey and it is an ever evolving journey that we're on. Yeah. And I, I do feel that we're on the early steps of this journey together. Um, there are many things that we can do, uh, but it's definitely a journey that we must all take together as, as everybody here uh, pointed to, because it's not one thing that a property can do. It's something that a, also a consumer movement needs to follow. And there are innovations that need to be set for everyone else to start uh, raising the bar together. If you have a sustainable practice at your property, go to the extranet and update your information. It's easy to do and you will help to begin to build a collection of sustainable properties for our guests. So that movement of creating that massive amount of sustainable supply that Alina is looking for so much, that can start today. Um, if you have yet to implement any practices and you don't know where to start, we have, as Bea pointed out, a sustainability handbook available for you. And we're looking forward to working with you to make sustainable travel easier for everyone. Thank you all.